So ChatGPT has apps now. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what they are, how do they work, and deploy an app of our own. So the basic idea is that within your conversation with ChatGPT, you can have it connect to various apps, uh, perform tasks on your behalf, and display a user interface that you can interact with and take different actions. So you could interact with the Booking.com app and look up accommodations. You can uh, use the Spotify app and play around with your playlists, or you can have a custom app of your own, both using the apps SDK and define specific actions and interfaces that the users can interact with. Let's take a look at an example. So we first need to uh, go to settings and connect the app when there are multiple apps available or we can uh, create our own. So we can also have custom apps and we'll do that uh, in a second. So I have connected the booking app and it's really simple to do. You don't need to authenticate. Some apps uh, don't require authentications while, uh, while others do. So you need to have to connect your user account if you want to interact with your personal data. Since with the booking app, we want to just perform some uh, search in, uh, in general, uh, independent of our user account. So there is no need to uh, log in. So we connect booking and I already did that and I can ask it to show me hotel options for a certain period in certain destination and it ChatGPT sent a request to booking, gets a response, but also has a UI that's specific to booking. So that's some HTML, JavaScript and CSS returned by the booking server and it displays it. And it's actually displayed in an iframe. So if we, if we take a look, on this, we can see that it's an iframe. So that's the basic idea of apps. You have uh, some app server. This could be Booking, Figma, or your own app server. And uh, it has a list of tools available and a list of interfaces. And whenever uh, the LLM uh, decides that calling that tool is uh, helpful to the user, it will send a request to get the response and also fetch the uh, UI that's linked to that response, that to that action basically, and display it in an iframe. As you can imagine, this can be very flexible, so you can perform various actions and you can display a multitude of user interfaces and the sky is the limit. So how does it actually work under the hood? The key building block is MCP or Model Context Protocol. And what MCP is, is basically a standard that allows different AI applications, so LLMs, basically, applications that make use of LLMs, so either Cloud Desktop, uh, ChatGPT, uh, VS Code when it has access to LLMs, and so on, communicate with uh, servers that expose some functionality, we call them tools, and the format, so it's JSON and it's, uh, it has a, a specific schema, and a certain sequencing. The client starts by asking the server to provide a list of tools, then each tool has a schema and the client can call that tool and get a response. And so MCP defines all that. And there's, uh, the, there, there are a multitude of MCP servers out there. And so uh, ChatGPT apps built on top of that. So the way the, uh, the way ChatGPT makes requests to the servers or to the app servers to perform actions is through MCP tool calls. In addition to tools, MCP also has a concept of resources and resources are basically data. So you can, uh, as an LLM client, you can ask an MCP server to provide some data. This could be JSON, uh, XML, some uh, other format, or it could be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so the UI that's displayed, that's an MCP resource, that's some data that's made available by the server. And the architecture of uh, ChatGPT apps is basically this. So we have ChatGPT on the left, and at some point the conversation is progressing. And if the user asks for hotels, that would be booking for Figma, that would be Figma files or some other server, the LLM will make a request for that MCP tool, and each MCP tool has reference to a UI. So within the MCP uh, tool definition, there's a reference to a UI element. And then uh, the tool is called, and then when you get the response, you also fetch the UI elements that uh, go with that uh, tool, and then you display them in an iframe. And when there is a need for another tool, you call it, uh, fetch its uh, HTML and CSS, and then display it, and so on. And that's basically the whole idea. 
So uh, ChatGPT app is simply an MCP server with some resources available that represent uh, UI elements. And they, uh, OpenAI has an apps SDK example repo and it unfortunately doesn't have a way to actually deploy the app and only provides uh, instructions to run it locally. So I created a fork and added uh, some simple uh, things to make it easy to run from scratch on a bare uh, Debian machine. And what my addition basically does is it, I added this install script that we can run. And so it downloads the repo, uh, installs the dependencies, and then also adds the KID server, which allows uh, easy setup with uh, SSL. So we can basically have an HTTPS endpoint. And let's do that. And let's try and run this. So we need uh, a virtual machine that has a public IP address, and we need a domain name that points to that public IP. So I'm going to start by creating uh, a VM in Google Cloud. I need to make sure that HTTP and HTTPS ports are allowed. So 80 and 443. And then I can create uh, that VM. It takes a second to spin up. So the machine has been provisioned and I have this public IP and now, so the machine has been provisioned and I have this uh, public IP and I created uh, a DNS record in my uh, name server that points to this public IP for the for a, sp a specific subdomain. So I can, check that it has been propagated so if i look for uh, oai hyphen app then my domain name and i query the dns the name server 888 that's the google one i get the same ip as the one that's showing up in the gcp console so i go to my github repo and i copy the command that allows me to install the example app which is the pizza example that OpenAI has in their uh, documentation or I need to and while the script runs we can quick, quickly go over what it does so we need to provide a, dom uh, a domain name as an argument and then we install get and node.js and then pnpm to install the javascript dependencies and uh, the example uses React as the UI uh, framework, but we could use vanilla JavaScript. And then we run the MCP server as a Python MCP server, which exposes the various tools. Uh, so when you search for pizza or ask for a list and things like that, so that's the MCP functionality. In the case of booking, it would have been looking up uh, available accommodations. And so depending on your app, you'd expose the functionality through uh, the MCP server. Then I set up Caddy to uh, provision uh, NSSL certificates. So my HTTP server, my HTTP MCP server can use HTTPS and have a secure endpoint basically. So it is progressing. Okay, and there you go, it's done. And my VM is now exposing an MCP server, but also serving uh, the UI files. So basically the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And here we can look uh, at an example of a UI that's available uh, from this example app, which is the pizza list. We can take a look at another one. That's the pizza carousel. And what basically happens is that when I ask JGPT for a carousel, it's going to call the carousel tool, execute it, but also in that tool uh, definition, it will have reference to this UI and it can go and send a request and fetch it and then display it in an iframe. And MCP or Model Context Protocol has this cool thing called MCP Inspector, which lets you uh, query MCP servers and look at their available tools, their resources, and basically debug and inspect your MCP server. 
So if I paste my URL, I have here the server we just deployed with a slash MCP uh, endpoint. And then I connect. I can either list the resources or the tools. So let's start with the resources. And we can here see the various resources. So that's the map, that's the carousel. And we can see that it's, uh, uh, we can see it's URI and that's the MIME type that uh, OpenAI defined. So basically text slash HTML plus SkyBridge. And then you have the actual HTML here that references the JavaScript and CSS. And if we go to the tools, these are the tools that the model can call. We can see pretty much the same thing, but these tools have uh, arguments. So for instance, the pizza map can take a pizza topping argument and we list the tools. We have uh, in, a, in each tool's description, this uh, output template field that references a UI element. And, that's, and that UI element is a resource that we can also fetch from the MCP server. And that's the link between the tool and the resource. And one interesting thing is that uh, the result of the tool call is made available to the UI element, to the runtime within which the UI element runs. So, so within the uh, Apps DK OpenAI documentation, they talk about this uh, window OpenAI uh, object, which has uh, variables uh, that can be used by the UI element. And this contained the tool output, you can also use them to save uh, the state. So if your uh, UI element has some state within it after the user interacted with it, you can save that. So when you refresh the page, you resume from where you left off. You can also uh, call other tools. So initiate a tool call from the UI. Imagine the user clicks on a button and that requires some uh, outside action. Then you can trigger that tool call from within the UI. So that window OpenAI uh, variable allows the UI element within the iframe to interact with the outside world, basically. Let's connect our deploy tool to ChatGPT and you need to be in developer mode and you can enable that from settings. So we go to the apps and I can create the tool. And uh, we don't require authentication. If we did, we need to provide uh, auth credentials and then we understand the risks and we still want to continue. So I'm going to create this tool. And what's happening behind the scenes now is that ChatGPT is sending requests to my server and asking it for the, to list the available tool, tools and also the resources. And if you click on the tool, we can see the same uh, available actions or tools that we saw in the MCP inspector. And so we also see the output template, that's the, the, the reference UI element and other interesting information. And I actually, in addition to the available actions, the original repo, I added a timer tool just to play around with it and see how it works. And we can see it uh, here. So let's ask it to do something. Let's ask it to show us a pizza carousel using the test tool. And while this is happening, we can see that we are getting requests in our MCP server. So it is happening as we speak, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at the result. We can see that we have the carousel here, and it's exactly the same UI we saw in, uh, when we were inspecting the resources uh, hosted by the server, and ChatGPT is uh, querying that. So we can even inspect and see what's going on. So there you have it. And the head of the, the head tag of the iframe, we can see that we are referencing the pizza carousel JS and CSS files, which is pretty interesting. And the cool thing is that uh, this example is rather simplistic and static. So the images are always the same, but you can imagine the case where the tool call is different depending on the user and that uh, hydrates and provides information and provides the state that is displayed in here. So you have different URLs for the images based on the user's location or preferences, and you can customize that experience. And if I interact with the UI here, the state can be saved uh, using the, uh, what was it called? The save set widget state, yeah. With the set widget state function. And then I can retrieve it when I, uh, when I refresh or redisplay the UI element again. So let's display the uh, UI element I added in the example, which is the pizza timer. 
And I, what I try to do is to save the state of the timer and basically how much time is left within the state. So upon refresh, it is uh, displayed. So we can see the UI element in here. And when you refresh, we get the initial uh, saved value. The save widget state kind of has a, a mind of its own and I did not uh, play with it a lot, but we get the idea. So there you have it. ChatGPT apps allow us to interact with various uh, app servers uh, to perform actions to accomplish user tasks. In addition to the usual uh, MCP workflow where you, where you have the LLM just perform tool calls, we have the addition of UI elements, uh, which are uh, retrieved as MCP resources and the user can interact with these elements and perform actions and you can save the state and resume where you left off. And it's kind of neat. Uh, you can start to see how the LLM or the assistant can be the central point of interaction between the user and their digital life. So, yeah, I think we are starting to see some new patterns emerge and some new ways of interacting with the digital outside world. One thing to keep in mind, so the MCP server uh, handles the tool calls and the resources uh, fed a retrieval, but the logic with, with which to display the apps is really specific to ChatGPT and OpenAI. And you have uh, new proposals to extend uh, the MCP specification to handle MCP apps, which are not specific to OpenAI, but, but can be used by, by all platforms willing to implement the protocol. And the idea is the same, is that you expose some resource, some UI elements through the MCP resources, and then you display them in an iframe within the conversation. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope this has been informative. Let me know what you think in the comments.